We're switching gears to baseball here for this segment. Bring on a member of the LSU Sports Radio Network and a national champion, Doug Thompson. Dugger, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing today, Hunter? Doing very, very good. Um, great, man. Good to see you this last weekend it, at the box. It was great to see you out at the box, and we were up there Friday, and Blake Money got the ball, and uh, that was pretty salty. Nobody in the Maneri era finished seven innings on opening night. He did just that, struck out ten. What did you like from Blake Money on Friday? Well, you know what? Um, he went out there and challenged the hitters, right? And, uh, you know, they were tricky at first. They had a bunch of seniors in their lineup, and they were as free-swinging a team as I've ever seen. And uh, once he kind of realized that, and realized that early pitch uh, for a strike was going to be very important, he started pitching to contact. I think in the first inning there was an, a really good, well-hit ball hit out to dead center field, normally probably up against the track, maybe even off the wall. But, I mean, it checked up short about 25 feet of, home plate, I mean, of uh, center field wall. And you could almost see that Blake Money at that point realized that the win was going to be a factor. It was going to keep the ball held up in the ballpark, and he was just going to trust the stuff, stuff and challenge the hitters, and that's what he did. I mean, Hunt, I think he might have been – that might have been the most efficient first five or six innings. I want to say he went into the sixth inning with less than 50 pitches. It was something yeah. incredible like that. But, uh, you know – it won't be that easy in the SEC, right? You're going to have to nibble a little bit more. That pitch count's going to go up. But, I mean, if you're looking at it as from a, from Jay Johnson's perspective, I mean, what more could you possibly ask for to open it up? We've seen some great ones on Fridays around here. Do you think he's got that, that type of ceiling? Well, I think it has to do with, you know, the ability to go out there and start 17, 18, 19 games, right? Um, that's what we've – we've kind of had a problem with over the, over the last several years. You had Jared Poche, who's a warrior. He was going to go deep into the games. And I think that's a big part of it, right? Can he, uh, can he last the whole season? If this were last year, I would have more doubt than I do this year because, man, what a great job he did in the offseason of getting his body ready and almost transforming it into a completely different human being. Uh, so because of that, because he's taken the conditioning a little bit more seriously, I do think, uh, that Blake Money has the type of endurance to be able to run the whole season in that Friday night spot. What do you think you saw from uh, Mikel Hilliard? Um, I, I didn't think his stuff was uh, too impressive to me, but uh, you know he pitched really well last season. Do you think he can be a guy that can earn a weekend starter job for this team this year? I sure hope so. I mean, he's always answered the bell. Uh, he's he's pitched in huge, huge games and come out on top when really the odds were against him. His breaking ball is a game changer at this level. Um, it's one of the best in college baseball. And when he's able to pitch backwards, when he can get that one over early in the count, his fastball picks up two or three miles an hour, at least perceptively by, from the hitters. Uh, and he just wasn't able to do that. I felt like he left a lot of curveballs up. It didn't have that normal Mikhail Hilliard break. Um, but, he's, but I also noticed that he's got a couple more pitches now in his repertoire, which is interesting. It's a, he has a cut fastball that's in the low 80s, high 70s. Uh, it looks like a, a little bit of a slider. It just doesn't – break quite as much uh, he's got plus demand of his fastball and uh, to answer your question yes I, I really hope that somehow some way uh, Mikhail Hilliard is is one of the trusted hands that Jay Johnson puts the ball in uh, as often as possible throughout the course of the season let's go to the Sunday arm I know Buzz was on the call on Sunday but you were familiar yeah. with Ty Floyd last year obviously and that's a guy that was kind of a one pitch guy last year just the fastball and it's a good one it was just one pitch I'm watching Sunday I don't know that he threw a breaking ball. He may have mixed one or two in that I didn't see. I don't know if he did that. Is there a, um, We're going to ask Jason Kelly about it tomorrow, but you're a former pitcher and you, you've seen Ty Floyd. Would there be a reason to just focus on the fastball in game, in game one to get him comfortable? It depends on how good his control is. I mean, if he's able to throw it on that outside black, you know, eight or nine out of ten times, then, yeah, I think it, it's possible to win with that. Now, look, it wouldn't have been possible for me. Um, you know, his fastball is much better than mine, but – I feel like to be a legitimate SEC starter, you have to have two strikeout quality pitches. And if that fastball is not big in velocity, it has to be incredibly accurate. But I think you have to have a strikeout pitch, a curveball, a changeup, something to keep SEC hitters off balance. So I think it would be tough to be a starter in the SEC with just a fastball. What do you think of uh, Gervais and uh, Razorman coming out late in the game? I thought both of those guys had potential to be the closer for this team. Do you think that's a, probably the role that you're going to see from those guys? Well, I think, uh, you know, Razorman will probably be the, the closer. I mean, <clears throat> I, I, rumor, rumor has it he hit 99 miles an hour. Yep. Um, <clears throat> he's incredibly cool, calm, and collected. 
a level-headed kid, a very good kid, according to Jay Johnson. Uh, so I really like him in that role. He seems almost unflappable. Of course, uh, when a guy's out there pumping it in there at 99, it's pretty easy to seem confident. Uh, but it seems like he's got a heavy, heavy fastball, and he really fits that closer mold perfectly. And Gervais is a freak. I mean, Gervais, is, he's, what, 6'10", and his fastball is in there 95. It looks like it's got some sick movement to it. So, you know, you could look at like a Gervais, or Gervais Fontenot uh, to, to Razelman, um, you know, bottom of the back of the bullpen, which would be extremely difficult uh, to get through with, if you have, you know, if we're able to have a lead comfortable enough to bring those guys in. So um, I really like those three guys out of the bullpen. And there's others. I mean, uh, I was talking to Coach Berkman, and, you know, he was saying that one of his struggles, you know, 25 years ago was finding – not 12 pitchers that could pitch, just six that could really go out there uh, with the expectations and the pressure that comes along with LSU baseball, with all the people watching, and actually breathe enough to throw the ball to home plate. And that was a struggle. But I was talking to Coach the other Coach Bertman, that is, the other day, and he said uh, he's, he's got 16 kids uh, out of the 19 pitchers that he has, you know, on, you know that he, or at least that he had in the fall. 16 of them can go out there and get out. And, uh, man, needless to say, that is that is extremely deep. And if Skip Bertman says that, then uh, I believe it. If we had Paul Gervais on back in the summer when he uh, decided he was coming to Baton Rouge, and I, I started, I was like, well, you're, I mean, you're 6'10", you throw, and he stopped me mid-sentence, and he goes, 6'11". I said, all right, whatever you, <laughs> whatever you say, I'm not here to tell you what you are. When you get on that mound, you're about 7 and a half feet. So, uh, he's, yeah, he's oh. something. Well, um, I'll tell you, and you'll probably agree, Hunt, I, normally those big, big, all guys like that, they look extremely awkward, and it does, there's not a whole lot. They don't look really fluid in their delivery and mechanics. It's more about their release point being so on top of the hitter that makes them effective. But I must say, Gervais looks extremely fluid, right? Like he he doesn't look like a guy who's six eleven out there. He looks extremely athletic uh, to be that tall on the mound. Yeah, I, I liked what I saw from him for sure. Now let's move to the offensive side of things. Chatting with Doug Thompson here, LSU Sports Radio Network, former Tiger right-hander and national champion. Um, you know, there are going to be a couple times over a 30-game SEC slate where, where the pitchers get the best of this lineup, but way, way more often than not, it's going to be a rough night's sleep before you get ready to face this lineup. I, I, I It's one through nine, man. What do you see? I see the same thing. Uh, I'm just trying to – I'm a superstitious guy, so I'm trying to remember this is Maine. They've been throwing yeah. their bullpens off of turf mounds in a gym uh, in a batting cage to a hitter. I mean – uh, I think that uh, you and I, Hunt, could probably have combined for a couple knocks over the course of the weekend if given a you know ten at bats each. I mean, there were some guys out there that that weren't. Look, we usually mention fastballs on the radio broadcast when they're you know above ninety, right? Uh, but I don't recall a guy. I think someone told me there was a lefty on Sunday that actually was throwing it in there at ninety ninety one. But you know, the entire pitching staff was you know eighty five to eighty seven. And uh, they were just completely overmatched. So I'm trying not to. I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to consider that. But but yes, Hunt. They are explosive. Uh, a lot of fun to watch. Starting off with Morgan at the top. He's one of my favorite hitters. He hits the ball extremely hard to all fields. Uh, and then on down through the lineup, Barry Cruz. I mean, it's just daunting. Uh, it reminds me a lot of some of those late '90s lineups for the Tigers. Uh, over the weekend, that three guys hit multiple home runs. Uh, Hunt's in the camp that he thinks Dylan Cruz will lead, lead this team in home runs. I think K. Doty's going to lead this team in home runs. Who do you say right now, brothers, have the, has the best chance to probably lead this team in home runs this season? Well, if everybody got the same pitches, Cruz would hit, you know, five, ten more home runs than everyone else. I mean, he is uh, – we are all extremely blessed to watch this young man play, play baseball in Baton Rouge. The problem is for him – that he's going to see 85% off-speed pitches throughout the course of the year. Um, you know, I saw a count this weekend where he got a 2-1 or a 3-1 breaking ball uh, when the other team was, you know, already down by 10 runs. So uh, the book is out on him. He's going to get – and for that reason, he may not lead the team in home runs, but he's going to be right there at the top. And I tend to agree with Hunt. Uh, he may be a good enough hitter to where it doesn't matter, and um, I think that if my front runner would also be Cruz, and then you've got Doty and Barry, and don't forget Braden Joe Bear, who is a moose of a human that swings about extremely hard. If he stays in that designated hitter spot, he's going to hit a bunch of home runs as well. So 
Um, you guys, you guys are all over it, Hunt. They are solid one through nine. And there's a couple guys in the in the dugout that we haven't even seen yet, right? Like uh, Drew Bianco was tearing the cover off the ball before he tweaked the hammy. I don't know, maybe their second to last um, inter squad game. So uh, there's some firepower that we still haven't seen, and I'm excited about the depth of this team overall, offensively and defensively. It's going to be a fun spring. Doug Thompson will be there for all of it, and we'll be chatting with him from time to time. Doug, we appreciate it. You're the man, Hunt. Y'all have a great day. You too.